start because I have 30 minutes for this talk and 150 slides. So let's see if I can make this work. So, hi, uh, my name is uh, Nicolae Berbece. Uh, I'm from Romania and we roll our R's and people cannot pronounce my second name. So I kind of became Nicolae Barbecue. And um, I'm the founder of Those Awesome Guys, a small indie studio from that of people from all over the world. Uh, we made a game called Move or Die, a four-player uh, friendship ruining game that came out last year. And uh, I go to a lot of events and I love talking about games because they're awesome. And uh, in order to illustrate this, I figured I should take my, a photo of all of my badges. Uh, and I took this photo when I started working on these slides and by the time I was done, I had to take an extra photo. Uh, so that's cool. And today I'm gonna talk about how to showcase your game. And based on that animation alone, you know that you should probably not trust me. Uh, I'm going to break this talk into three parts. Um, before, during, and after the event. And in order to make things a bit more easier, I'm gonna put a timer at the top of the slides telling you when to do what you're about to see on screen. Because it's so much more convenient. So, Starting right off, before the event, um, the first thing you have to do uh, is decide that you wanna apply, decide that you wanna go to an event. So you have a selection of events you can go to. For example, if you want some press, you go to E3. If you want some players, you go to Gamescom. If you're interested in uh, talking with developers, you have GDC, Steam Dev Days. If you have weird stuff, you should go to a maze. And um, if you wanna hear uh, people in uh, suits talk about uh, CPM and retention rates and uh, buzzwords, go to Casual Connect. Uh, but don't go alone, tag along a group. And um, doing this is amazing because going with a group means uh, the costs are lower, you don't have to spend time on logistics and all of those things, all of those are taken care of by the group. So you have certain groups to pick from. Uh, for example, there are curated groups like Indie Mega Booth or uh, The Mix, where you apply uh, with your game and they decide if you're worth investing into uh, and they send you to an event. Uh, and that's cool. There are country groups. If your country has one, that's great. They're usually sponsored by governments. They're amazing. Uh, though they're weird groups where um, you can basically contact them directly, like all control GDC, Amaze. And uh, there are uh, entire events where you can talk directly with the organizers, like TwitchCon and so on and so forth. But the point is, not all of these groups go to all the events. So in order to fix that problem, I created this Venn diagram where you, you can just pick the, the event you wanna go to and you can see what groups go to that event in that circle. Um, so yeah, that's applying. Next up, travel and housing. Make sure uh, you book your um, uh, housing two days before the event because you have to set up your booth and um, you think that things won't go wrong but they will go wrong and you will be fixing bugs on your Airbnb couch. Uh, and book one day after the event, uh, like one extra day. So you can have some time to see the city, maybe catch up on potential meetings, so on. Um, book close to the event because again, you don't think uh, things will go wrong, but they will. So you'll have to run back and forth and you'll be super grateful when you don't have to go all the way to the other side of the, the um, city. So that's travel and housing. Next up, parties. These are super important and I cannot stress enough how important these are. Uh, parties sell out weeks before uh, the event and it's really, a, it's a bummer because uh, parties are a great way to meet new developers in a more casual, um, kind of setting that doesn't have this sterile uh, game developers uh, event kind of feel to them. So they're amazing. Uh, but as an example, that party, which is like quite a known party, uh, sold out in three minutes. So that's kind of tricky to get tickets uh, to all the parties. And there are several ways you can do this. You can uh, check Eventbrite, Facebook. Uh, there are some uh, Google Docs floating around with all the events. And one cool thing you can do is go um, on one of those websites that uh, keep track of changes on certain websites and you can just input the party websites and you will get a notification whenever the, the tickets go on sale. Those are parties. Next up, prints. Uh, if you're gonna showcase your game, you're gonna print some marketing materials. And I'm talking about banners, shirts, business cards, whatever. Um, one very important thing to keep in mind is colors. Uh, and just to illustrate this, can you guys tell me what company this is? Yeah, what about this one? Yep, and what about this one? 
Exactly. Well, I'm not sure how well the colors show up on the projector, but you get the idea. And you might be thinking, oh god, I have to be this huge company in order to pull this off, but you don't. Um, and just as an example, uh, this is Tiny Build. Um, and the cool thing about them is that they have this super aggressive orange all over them. And it's not only in their banners, it's also in their lanyards and in their uh, business cards and everywhere. And it makes them super easily recognizable and it's super, super useful. The same for um, uh, Swedish Game Arena. Again, it's in their clothes, it's in their everything. So when you see a pink person somewhere around the convention, you know they're working for a Sweden Game Arena. Um, Roll-up banners. Now, if you're gonna make roll-up banners for your game, please, please keep the logos as high as you can. Because uh, when you are at an event, there are, there's a sea of people around you, and the only thing you can see is from the shoulder up, so anything below that is occluded, and if your banner looks like this, nobody will remember the name of your game or the logo, so don't do that. Um, flyers. Stop it with the flyers. They don't work. Um, actually, how many of you got a flyer and then went back home and uh, got it out after folding it nicely and putting it in your pocket and actually went on the website on that flyer. Yeah, not a lot of people. Um, but yeah, they don't work because you, you see these tables around the event and they're not places where you can pick up a flyer from, it's where you drop off a flyer. It's where flyers go to die. And if they don't go there, they end up on the floor and we've all seen these scenarios at the end of events. Uh, instead, you can make business card sized flyers. These are so amazing. It's, it's exactly like a flyer, but convenient. Uh, and it has all the information you need on it. Uh, for example, for Move or Die, uh, I, we had the um, title of the game, uh, the logo, some bullet points about the game, and on the back it had a character and um, a little description for each character. So it had this kind of collectible feel to it. Um, so yeah, those were prints. Stop it with the flyers. Next up, adjust your game. You can be smart about this. If you're gonna showcase your game at a convention, you can um, do what we did with Move or Die, and we made a convention mode, which was easily accessible in the options menu. And when you turn it on, it made some changes to the game. For example, when you play Move or Die, you can uh, set how long a match can last. And um, when convention mode is turned on, that option is disabled, and it defaults to five minutes. Uh, so the player doesn't have to worry about that. Um, make sure the game runs on its own, and by this I mean make it very clear when the demo ended, so the player actually knows when to put down the controller. Um, make sure it auto restarts, uh, both in-game and both uh, if the game catches on fire, which was our case several times. Uh, we had a program running in the background, checking if the game is running, and if it crashed and it was not running, it would boot it up again. Uh, and nobody knew that, it felt like it was a soft restart. But yeah, um, if you have a multiplayer game, fill in empty slots with AI uh, because it's super convenient to just pick up a controller and jump right in and replace an AI. Uh, and uh, if you have an unlock system, make sure you unlock everything because no one will grind for that legendary item in your game on the show floor. Um, and if not everything, at least enough to show what the game has, uh, has going for it. Uh, idle card. This is another very cool thing uh, that shows up in uh, convention mode in Move or Die if the game doesn't receive any input for around a minute or so. And it's basically a looping video that's a bit more engaging than a very cold menu screen. So it encourages the player to actually pick up the controller. And uh, on top of that, Make a safe environment. Uh, when convention mode was turned on, uh, we don't allow the player to back out too far, like go in the menu and mess around with the video options to potentially mess the experience for other players. So we um, make the game, uh, we lock it in the character selection screen. So it's a much more streamlined experience. Uh, so that's game adjustments. Next up, next up packing. Um, you want these things in your luggage because you will need them, and if you don't need them, your neighbor will. And uh, when you don't have them, you'll be super glad that your neighbor has them. So please, please be a good uh, indie dev and have all of these in your luggage. And um, most importantly, on top of all of these, have throat lozenges, because your voice is the most important thing. You're supposed to talk about your game, that's why you're there, and if you're gonna lose your voice in the first day, that won't be fun. Um, here's a quick tip. 
throw in an extension cord because you will need it uh, and you're gonna become a hero at airports. So that's cool. Um, controls. Now, if possible, try avoiding keyboards because keyboards are um, kind of intimidating. Uh, they have 100 plus keys on them. And how many, game, uh, how many keys uh, is your game using? Probably not more than 10 or so. So I would advise using a, a controller. Uh, and if uh, you can do it, you can make one of these things, which is uh, what the behemoth did for their uh, game Pit People. And it's basically a 360 controller with prettier buttons. So it's super engaging. It encourages you to actually try out the game out of curiosity. Uh, but if you're going to use controllers, uh, go wired, because um, you won't have to worry about batteries running out. Uh, you won't have to worry about potential interference with all the other controllers uh, on the venue. Uh, but most importantly, because people still shit. Um, so yeah, you want one of those, uh, which I'm not sure where you can find them, but I'm pretty sure you can find them on eBay and Amazon. Uh, so yeah, it's basically a thing that locks your controller to your booth. So it's still there the next day. Um, if you have a mobile game, um, you can get the same thing for a phone, basically, uh, or a tablet. Or even better, you can do what uh, Team Meat did with their new uh, Meat Boy game and just get a huge touch screen, which is such a better way to, to show your game. Uh, and here's another quick tip. Don't rent screens from the venue because they tend to be super, super expensive. And if you're a small indie dev, you most likely cannot afford that. So look for the local rental uh, companies. They're amazing. Um, now, you're at the event. What do you do first? You build your booth. And um, uh, when it comes to building booths, height is very important. Uh, this was uh, the Move or Die booth at Gamescom. And uh, you can see big, that is Move or Die because we had a big banner saying Move or Die. And next to us, there was a very cool game called Epistory uh, because you can see their banner. But next to them was another cool game that I cannot name because I cannot see their banner. So height is super important. And that's why you see, that's why these are the things you see when you first walk into a venue, these huge banners. And that's why they're on the ceiling. Um, because height is at a premium. And the higher you can get your uh, prints, the better. Uh, and uh, here's a weird setup. I had a, one of the events where I put a screen really, really high. And that was super, super cool for spectators to just watch the game from a distance. Um, a quick way of doing this, and a cheap one, is to get balloons that spell out the name of your game. And you don't have to worry about, I don't know, getting them too high, because they do that on their own. Uh, Sound is also very important uh, because you're basically surrounded by super loud companies and the reason why you're there is to get players' attention. And you, you can do this very easily by using sound. Um, and you might think that um, I, uh, the speaker might be too loud when you test it on your own, but I can assure you it's not loud enough because it's a different thing when you test it on your own and when you test it with a huge crowd surrounding it, completely occluding the, uh, the sound. But luckily, you can easily fix that with one of these portable amps that you can find for quite cheap and then uh, return them. Uh, this kind of works for uh, multiplayer games, but if your game uh, relies on, I don't know, narration or very heavily relies on sound, that's kind of tricky because I would advise uh, staying away from headphones uh, because it prevents you from talking to the actual player, which is something I love doing. And it's kind of tricky when you end up in that situation with one cup off the ear and the other one trying to focus on two sources of audio. So avoid headphones if possible. Uh, lights are also also very important um, because when you look at uh, booths at an event, they're all static. They're all banners. They're all static things. And when you see something flickering in the background, your eyes subconsciously go there without you realizing. So this gives you a huge advantage. These are basically cheap LED Christmas lights around our banner. And uh, they're super, super effective. Uh, also, if you want to look super professional, get a TV topper, which is basically a piece of cardboard with your logo on it, and duct tape it to the back of your TV. It looks super professional. Um, buy food before the doors open, because um, you think you'll have enough time. You won't have enough time to do this during the event, unless you have a dedicated team and you take shifts running to grab food. Um, so I advise you do this before the doors open to the public, because it's going to be super useful when you can just grab a sandwich on the fly. 
that's booth building. Uh, next up, film everything, because it would be such a waste of time to actually go to an event and not have anything to show after it. So what I do is I, I take shots of the crowd, of, uh, I take interviews, um, and you can do this very easily with uh, basically recording audio with your phone and then having a friend point the camera at you. And I also um, have this thing called a reaction cam, uh, which is uh, basically a webcam that you put on your monitor facing the crowd and you let it record during the entire event. And uh, you might be thinking that, oh geez, I don't wanna go through three days worth of footage and find the interesting spots. But here's the cool part, you don't have to, because assuming that webcam records audio, you can just see where the peaks are in the audio track, and those are interesting parts right there. It's basically somebody yelling or the crowd clapping. Um, and when you, when you put all of those together, you end up with something like this, which is a snippet from the Move or Die trailer. And I think it's super, super effective to not only see the gameplay itself, but also how people react to your game. Um, and I just love seeing this, it's so cool. Um, so yeah, filming, next up, uh, giveaways. Uh, basically, you want a lot of people at your booth and giveaways do exactly that. So I'm sure you walked uh, around at an event, you saw a lot of zombie hands in the air, that's probably because the company was throwing free stuff in the crowd. Um, and uh, it's usually pretty easy to make these things, you can make anything from plushies, pins, shirts, uh, and these things are super amazing because they give you this seal of uh, validity. They make you look super professional, even though you might not be. Uh, also, you can even just print Steam keys on a, on a business card, and even that is considered something you, know, you can give out for free. Uh, but if you cannot make these, uh, feel free to mail some companies and tell them that you're gonna showcase your game and that you wanna do a giveaway and they will be more than glad to send you free stuff. So that's cool. Um, quick tip, tournaments bring a lot of eyes to your game. Uh, and the cool part about this is that you don't necessarily have to plan for it. You can just grab a marker and a piece of cardboard and write something on it really quickly. Um, and um, one cool idea that I saw uh, my friends at Juicy Beast doing is they have this uh, party game and they um, had a thing where they gave out free Steam keys for every spectator if the player uh, won a match against the AI. It was a very difficult AI. Uh, but the point is, if that happened, everybody looking at their booth got a free Steam key. Uh, so I shamelessly ripped off this idea out of curiosity at a small local event. And uh, basically, this is how it looks when that happens. And um, I think this is freaking awesome. Um, and not only that, this guy was super excited. Uh, but yeah, those are contests. Um, next up, spectators. Spectators are super important because you only have a limited number of computers and screens that you can use. And people have to wait until they get their turn to play your game. And you have to make sure uh, you can keep them there long enough so they can try the game. Um, and that is pretty tricky because spectators attract more spectators but they have a surprisingly short time frame uh, when it comes to grabbing their attention. And I was thinking how I can show this uh, in a very interesting way. Um, so what I did is at an event that I was showcasing Move or Die at, I just stepped away from my booth and I was recording random people walking by my booth and then I edited that footage and I added a number above their head representing the number of seconds they were looking at my booth. Um, and you end up with something like this. And this took a lot of time to edit. As you can see, in this case, we're under five seconds. So that's a very small time frame. Uh, here's a different one. They were just walking by, they see my booth. He was checking his phone a little bit, looking at the booth a bit more. And yeah, that's under 10 seconds. That's 10 seconds, and this is this one, this is the last one, and it's my favorite. Uh, some girls were passing by, they were looking at the booth, and I was panning to show the booth, and then back to them, and they're gone. <laughs> and I couldn't even set this up if I wanted to. Um, so yeah, you have a super short time frame to get their attention, and you have to give them something to do. So what uh, we did is, 
we made these prints of um, character outlines and we encouraged people to draw their own characters. And uh, if they took a photo of it and post it on social media, they had a chance of winning a, a free Steam key for the game. Uh, and people loved it. And it was such a success that we always run out of prints. Uh, there, there were so many drawings that we literally uh, built a wall out of them. And uh, I, I could literally uh, wallpaper my entire room with them and I would still have some left. And on top of that, it's really cool because uh, there were some really, really cool ones. Uh, I would never be able to do this myself. Um, but most importantly, we got the best uh, ones and we actually added them in the game. So they became actual uh, playable characters. And I love having this two-way conversation with, uh, with the players. Uh, so that was it about spectators. Next up, elevator pitch. You've heard a lot of uh, tips and suggestions about elevator pitch, and I won't tell you that, oh, you have to wake up in the middle of the night knowing how to describe your game. Uh, but what's something that not a lot of uh, people mention is that you will repeat yourself a lot, and it's perfectly fine because uh, you optimize that sentence, that perfect sentence for your game, and you know it perfectly. And for you, it feels super weird because you know it and you keep repeating it. But for the person you're talking to, it's perfectly normal because it's the first time they're ever hearing it. So you will repeat yourself a lot, and it's perfectly fine. Um, let's see, what's next? Talk to people. Everybody's as scared as you are because we're all game developers, we're all gamers. Um, and uh, even better, uh, introduce your friends. When you hang out with your friends and um, you, you meet somebody new, introduce your friends because it makes it so much easier for them and you'll be super grateful when a friend of yours does this for you. Uh, and regarding friends, uh, ditch them because, I mean, specifically in this case, you are literally in the same building with the best people from this industry. It would be a waste of time to spend that time with your friends instead of meeting amazing people. Um, so yeah. Don't hang out with your friends, meet new people. Uh, so yeah, talk. Uh, one quick tip is uh, say goodbye instead of walking off. That's super, super cool. <laughs> um, so yeah, you're done with the event. Um, what do you do now? Uh, I would advise you edit your footage uh, and get everything you recorded and try to make a coherent video out of it. Uh, you could use it as a trailer or you could use it as a short promotional video like specifically for that event. Um, so I do these quite a lot, and <laughs> yep, that's Japan. And it's super cool seeing these because they're so easier to share than a bajillion photos. So yeah, edit your footage. Um, next up, business cards. You probably got a lot of them. You gave out a lot of them. Uh, make sure you follow up. Uh, but I would say wait, wait uh, around three or four days before you send back emails because people fly home, they're busy, they take some time to get back to your regular schedule. I think three or four days is the, the best uh, amount of time. Um, and uh, write postmortems. Write about your experience because uh, it's very hard to talk about showcasing your game uh, because it's hard doing it. So you probably try to learn more about this by reading what other developers did. And writing a postmortem is your way of giving back to the community. So please do this. Um, don't forget about contest winners, in case you had contests that uh, with, with winners uh, announced after the event, because we forgot about that, and it was not fun. Um, so yeah, that's it. You're done. Uh, you're done with the event. Um, now it's the best part. You get to check out the sales spike, because you went to an event and you got a shit ton of sales. Except you didn't, because it doesn't work like that. And that's a huge misconception that developers have. And in order to represent this, I went to some developer friends and I asked them uh, about their um, sales uh, graphs. And here's an example, here's Brigador. You see all those spikes? Those are discounts. You see PAX East right there in the middle? It barely made a dent. Um, this is the, the graph for Move or Die. All those spikes, again, discounts, all those events we went to, barely show up on the, uh, on the, on the graph. Um, here's Stardew Valley. I had to zoom in to see packs there, and it was lower than the previous day. So yeah, here are some more. You can take photos of these. You can, you can find them in the vault. Events don't bring you sales, so please keep this in mind. 
but they bring you something better. Um, and here are some examples. Uh, I went to an event, and then uh, in my hotel, I ran into James Portno from Extra Credits, and then some time passed, and he introduced me to a publisher that I ended up talking with. Um, here's another example. I, I went to an event, and then uh, I made a very cool uh, Chinese developer, and then some time passed, and he helped me localize my game in Chinese. Uh, I went to an event and I, uh, I met a cool dude sitting on the, couch, uh, on the couch of the hotel lobby and it turns out that he was a director for a very cool uh, documentary called Game Loading. Some time passed and he ended up visiting me in Romania so he can record a special segment for his documentary. Uh, and I can keep doing this. I met Northern Lion at an event and he played my game and then some time passed and he made a video about my game. Uh, and it's the same with Giant Bomb. They mentioned us on their panel because we ran into them at an event. So with all these things in mind, I want to repeat that events won't get you sales. They'll get you awesome relationships. So with that in mind, get ready for the next event. Thank you. I guess we have time for questions. I'm not sure how much time I have left. But yeah, questions. Hi. Yes. Yes. Uh, what's the point of even having a booth if the whole point is making connections with re or relationships with others? So, so having a booth, first of all, is a great way getting into an event, but on top of connections, it gets you exposure that translates into, into sales over time. For example, North of the Line ended up making a video about Move or Die because he got to play it at an event. And it's a different thing when you can go up to a booth and play the game or have me show it on a phone, which is not the same thing. Uh, and another cool thing that I, I observed when uh, going to events, for example, I went to Gamescom uh, several years in a row, and the first year, uh, People never heard of the game, but then the second year when I was stepping away from the booth and blending in into the crowd, I was hearing people walk by and go like, oh, I, I remember that game, that's Move or Die, we played it last year. So it, it gradually builds exposure, so I think it's pretty worth it on top of the connections you make. Yeah. Hi. Hi. Uh, so you mentioned when you have a lot of spectators or players at your booth, you, that breeds more, but yeah. it's also my experience that if you have none, that keeps more away. Right. Any tips for getting out of that? So that's kind of tricky because um, spectators always have, so just people walking around always have this thing where you, you try to get them to play the game and they always go like, nah, nah, I'm just watching. Um, and I mean, the reason why they're there is to play games. So you have to figure out a way to get them to actually try out your game. Uh, and a very effective way of doing this, I figured out that is to just hand them the controller and go like, hey, hold this for a second. And just to just walk away. <laughs> and I actually did that and it works. It's amazing because then they're like, well, might as well try it now. <laughs> um, so yeah, I guess, I guess you have to get creative with how you make your game seem not intimidating. Thanks. Thank you. Any other questions? Cool. I guess that's about it. Thank you very much again.